we're good. Uh, hello, you can put your everybody. videos in if you want. Uh, not today. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, no hello pressure. To everybody, right? Uh, uh, we have a pretty standard agenda for today. We will discuss uh, um, team progresses, and uh, beside that, yeah, we had actually birthdays of uh, quite a few uh, members uh, of um, our group, including Ogle and Slava. So happy birthday to you guys, and. Uh, Basically, uh, we can jump to uh, reporting. Uh, as for my group, risk factors, uh, we are fine, slowly progressing, no blockers. Uh, the next uh, group is transmission. Is Christina Nicole? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, vaccines, Dan Sosa? No. Right. It's a Saturday. Uh, <laughs> it's a Saturday and it's quiet. <laughs> right. Slava with data set? No. Oh. So that's you're actually a good You're literally indication. the only team member. You're only, the only on team here is, is oh, currently okay. represented as risk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's yeah. actually a good point to, uh, to mention that we should create kind of this daily Google Doc with uh, a progress from all the teams which is fully synchronous and should you know work for different time zones different people and anyone can jump in and fill it out and it will be pinned to general channels so that uh, anyone can check out the the most up-to-date stuff for today and i think that's the only way to to kind of achieve this knowledge propagation what do you guys think uh, that's uh yeah we for example in a task uh, risk uh, we started to do uh, um, kind of synchronizations when we see that we have uh, quite a few pieces of code already and there is something to discuss so and yeah there are obviously changes because as you can see uh, some countries for example greece israel and uh, uh, Czech and uh, some some more they are out of quarantine so people obviously are get back they're getting back to their offices and after a long break they start to work a norm, normal shift which is extremely tiring so some some kind of uh, slowdown or let's say an ability to connect with peers in a comfortable time instead of let's say some regular fixed time that that would be lovely yeah we, we, it's one thing we've been discussing about trying to um have a more asynchronous um knowledge propagation but we just need to make it as as, as quick as possible because the last thing i want to do is expect you know every single part or team or sub team to write a fucking 200 2000 word essay on what they're up to right now the last thing we need to do is be making people have a lot of work it needs to be able to um, define what people have been up to quickly and easily and yeah we need to work out a system to do that so oh it's probably swearing. Should be, it's probably should be something like we, we have pretty standard uh, procedure developed by by now yeah. uh, so we can for example uh, progress like so let's say a degree of the progress one word to add like what you are working on and blockers yes or no if blockers what do you need something that is like really really uh, fast yeah. to fill in and what, what one piece that i like that you know that uh, anton you had you had talked about earlier on is that especially if we start to get that streamlined going through that process of of quickly checking in on each of the teams um in terms of of progress and blockers becomes fast. And one of the things that can become a, a key part of these daily calls um, is it's a good chance to take all of the different perspectives that we have from here and to say like, like what are the things that are um, both like progressing, wins, interesting that you're noticing from kind of your corner of the line? Um, because this is sort of one of the unique opportunities we have to be getting all of those different, different pieces in. Uh, yeah, and actually, it doesn't have to be complex. I mean, 
it's it's a very simple structure and just telling people that hey you have two sentences or three sentences to to explain what's going on that, I have an idea how to how to do this like what format it should be some form of a like a instagram story or like a snapchat <laughs> something like that so after that you actually, can just if, if i may i actually support anton because you know to me you know coming from corporate world with all the excels I don't like spreadsheets. Come on. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> not that I don't like them. They're kind of efficient, but you know, I, I think this system's dying of overload. You know, yeah, because you know, overload of text, right? Right. And it's just kind of it's it, it's actually narrowing your brain too much when you open a spreadsheet, and basically you you tend either <laughs> to just forget the learning or or uh, just, you know, repeat the same and same uh, empty statements every day, just copy paste. Can, couldn't we I just do like a, like a okay. form, like, an auto, like a form with like the fields and you just fill the fields in and then they end up propagating one place? Yeah, it, 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 that way we don't have to make a new document every day. I think, I think that another option would be actually to try and create some new feed, you know, like Specifically, as Anton says, it's, it's not an Instagram. It may be Twitter. Like you know, we've done this, this, and this, and there will be history easily accessible. That's my view. The other thing that's nice with something like that is that it makes it so that it, it can be tweeted out. It makes it a lot easier for us to let other people know what it is we're doing in bite-sized portions for so that they can grab onto whatever problem. Because my word, are we not bite-sized sometimes? <laughs> Here's an hour-long video to work out what we've done. Oh. Well, so here is the. The, the thing, like, uh, to trace back to first remark that Arthur did, like, oh, maybe we need to have this asynchronous document so we can do this with the core team. So we already have that. Every team has a Trello board, right? And this is where you're supposed to kind of log in and just kind of see what happens, which cards propagated yeah. from, like, we just don't to use done. It. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it just doesn't get right? used. So the fact that if we add yet another yeah, this is cool. text format document to this, it it not necessarily you know produces anything. I mean, what, adds, uh, kind of like the, one of the things that we, we did for a little bit at, uh, at I think we had about a week and a half where we did it at communications that I, I thought was kind of working pretty well was that mixture of like we just we have our done list goes over to archives and does each day before we do that it's easy to drop a little report so we have we have a lot of weeks worth of reports where we just list like from the things that were done the things that are relevant here they are in bullet form and then also to have a, just a card for a daily call that anybody who's on the team is able to add to the agenda that's there um so that when we have the call we know here's the things in kind of prioritized order already that we need to go over. a little question uh, if i may uh, uh, uh there is a little bit kind of there are so many channels so there is uh, less opportunity to follow all, all the topics mm -hmm. and uh, i, ju oh, I, I just wanted i just wanted uh to ask uh, what's going on uh with uh, our lovely community in terms of our uh, outer communication process where do we stay yeah so one of the one of the huge things you said in terms of our outer communication process, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So one of the one of the huge pieces that we're working on now is trying to to get the product essentially the product descriptions to have it so that we have a clear, concise description of here's four different tools that we're building. Here's why those are relevant to different people. Um, and I mean, each one is it's it's sort of like the little the, the back of the box pitch for what the thing is. Um, a little bit also on what status it, it's at. Is it something that people can already start using? Is it something that's under development? Um, because I think that's that's something that we really need to get clear on in all of our discussions with people are in terms of product and in terms of service, what are the things that we offer? Um, so that's one of the pieces that we're trying to work on as well as just a general overview document that says only a tiny bit of like, here's who we are, here's, here's what we do, here's kind of how we do it, and here's why we're interested in interfacing with with you, whichever organization it is. Um, uh, may I please ask, do we have four products at the moment in development? So actually, very good question. I think that we've uh, created this vacuum of uh, information in terms of not communicating what we're actually creating. 
So that's probably to be bridged um, in the next couple of days. So as an intro to that, we kind of identified that our real product, the real useful thing at the end of the tunnel is this coronavirus literature review product. Um, and again, this is lorem ipsum for now, bottom text, and it's not live yet, but at least it gives some, some picture to it. So it's becoming impossible to understand the scientific progress in the fight against COVID-19 due to the growing amount of published and preprinted medical research using the most advanced AI algorithms powered by the human curation. We're creating the first ever network of COVID-19 literature reviews. So essentially a bunch of stuff from different, different journals comes into this and it spits out uh, the actual tables. <coughs> and, you know, we have kind of a, a prototype of actual tables that were created with Dr. Tayab and his team of 100 medical professionals. And this is basically specific tables answering specific questions. So risk factors, um, it's gonna be, uh, for example, age. And we can see all of these papers with all of these columns, the, the things that uh, medical professionals are manually extracting right now. But ideally, we not only give them a tool and infrastructure to do it efficiently, but also create AI um, functionality to help them extract this and then annotate and fix it um, and make sure that it's, it's actually you know, correct information. So like fixing this and uh, for that we are, we have this mega tool called Hypothesis, which is um, basically enabling all of these human interactions. So let me, let me try and demo it real quick. This. Right, so that's basically, uh, the, the idea was to use, uh, I'm just confirming because like I'm looking at it and um, I, I feel that I have no idea what's going on and others probably too. Uh, so the question goes like that. We do have a team that creates a high quality data set within the Dataverse environment, correct? Yep. Based on that data set, it will be uh, possible uh, to actually have a few, few levels of reviews, right? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, so to give you a, a quick uh, demo, we are, hold on, I need to let someone in. Sure. Okay, so for example, let's imagine that this is an actual like uh, literature review or a paper and, and medical professionals will be able to annotate it and say, you know, it's actually not systems, but like uh, mechanisms or whatever. And I just annotated it and it will, um, you know, basically help us create this um, uh, curated human in, in the loop data set. Then uh, you can, actually annotate these as entities or like values. So for example, Christine was able to indicate this as time and this can uh, further help us in creating this, uh, you know, literature review AI that, that will be able to generate it. Got it. Amazing. Uh, also, uh, how, can, how can I contribute to this, uh, this annotation? Um, so it's, a URL, let me post it in Slack. Um, okay, so it's it's actually on labs.coronawai.org slash hypothesis HTML. I'm sending it in, in Slack too. And my understanding, this, this is a good chat to have in terms of like how we're communicating it outwards. Um, so this is this is like the flagship product. This is the thing that is going to be, I think, of high use to a lot of people reasonably quickly. And then we're going to also have, um, we'll kind of can describe to people, you know, we've got these different layers that are building on each other of the, the, the data sets enriched um, the code, and then that getting woven into products so that we have um, useful stuff at each of those different layers. And then we'll have some different little pieces that are being worked on. So there'll probably be, my hunch is, numerous pieces that are coming out um, based off of each team's work. 
Uh, but that this is kind of the, the, the mothership piece that, that a lot of work is going into to make that a tool to suit. Yeah. And it's I, I, I understand. I, I'm, I really apologize if I, I have a question. Um, what is the uh, what is the seamless integration program for 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 the teams to be a part of this thing? Yeah, a very good question. And let's uh, let's uh, let me show because you this giant diagram uh, because this diagram is overwhelming, but oh. it will answer your question uh, good. enough good. Uh, you know explanations. Sure. Um, so it's it's kind of big. And it starts from, you know, this, these four main pieces, the data infrastructure, everything that is powering the, the actual Core 19 and all the other stuff, ontology engines, something that actually extracts the underlying structure and data. And then uh, there is this, you know, AI powered literature review tools, just an, an interface for tables, uh, which is powering the discovery oh. engine which is, you know, the next level of stuff and being able to discover things that you don't know exist. Um, but how, to answer your question, how does a risk factors team integrate into all of this? There is a scope of work um, that belongs to ontology engines. And obviously ontology engines also interfere with all of this. It's not like it exists separately. It's all part of the, the whole big thing. Indeed, right. And then ontology engines kind of goes into metadata layer, which is like types of papers, types of authors, sources of papers, geo geospatial data, temporal data, social networks data, and other stuff. But then there is direction layer, which is the actual questions that are being asked. And this is where Kaggle questions come into place because we're still operating under like vaccines and therapeutics team scope. Uh, the risk factors team scope and transmission incubation team scope. So here you have risk factors team, which is working on types of risks, health conditions, demographics, etc. We probably need to fill this in further. The only team that I was able to fill this in for was a uh, kind of VT team because um, Dan was able to create that, that giant diagram of his and we had a quick sync on that. So you can see that there is actually a branch and there are many branches that come out of the VT team, like the clinical trials team scope, which is dedicated to types of trials that generate types of specimen, types of animals, phases, and other stuff. So again, this stuff is not finished and it's, it's impossible to fully describe it, but that's how each individual team and each individual question integrates into the big picture. Because essentially, once you figure out this, it fits in into you know this whole uh, scope, and it it funnels into this AI literature review tool. Uh, so, uh, would you be kind enough to share this uh, link of this? Yes. So I've actually uh, shared it. I think in. Let me see in the discovery engine channel but i'll repost it yeah i'll repost it so does does that help answer your question maya uh it um the the purpose of question uh, was more like to have some kind of recorded information yep. that i can share with team do you think and that answers i think this answers that uh, beautifully right and uh, we are still waiting for, for more announcement uh, regarding the directions. Uh, because I believe uh, if we can uh, shortly, uh, shortly cover uh, the uh, motivation, right, and uh, direction, uh, that, that would be lovely. 100%. Uh, I wish there was an easy answer to those. Unfortunately, we're still uh, figuring that out. And we, as a part, as a byproduct of, uh, you know, of, uh, let's say there is a way to reach this uh, clarity in different, many different ways. One of the ways that actually was beneficial to us is thinking about say sustainability and making sure that we have enough resources infrastructure wise and external 
kind of contractors or people like lawyers to help us um, that won't be able to help us for free all the time. And we started thinking about how do we get an actual funding for the infrastructure. And the, the immediate um, kind of idea was to establish some form of roadmap that we can pitch to, um, you know, grant vehicles to basically um, foundations or organizations or uh, government uh, agencies that uh, are already giving out grants for specific purposes. And as an exercise to that, we'll be able to come up with a roadmap, have a little bit more clarity, and also understand how it all fits into real world outside of our organization. Great. So I'm done with my questions. Probably someone else do have some questions from Zone Base Co. It seems very good. All right. Um, we still have five minutes. I think uh, we can just chat about uh, different stuff. I think the most. I think, I think Gal Gali could talk a little bit about some of the contacts she's made recently because people might not know about that. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. exciting. That's exciting stuff. Ugly. You're muted. Yeah, she she may not be here. She may not be present at the this time. But um, to to give a quick uh, snapshot, Ugly is working on multitude of actual partnerships and talking with people. I I I don't even remember whom, but not to discredit her amazing work, but there were some companies that work with patient data. There was some company. Um, does anyone remember that? Yeah, there's um, right. What was it? Panelists. Um, there's a co there's a communications company from Belgium. She's got made contact with. It seems really interesting. Uh, we see now partnerships. Is it partnerships? Yeah. So there's Schuttler and Partners, a Belgian-based communications and public affairs consultancy offering up support on PR, media relations, and communication, regulatory regulatory advice, and project management around COVID-19 R and D. They've also followed up with some confirming they'd like to support us with an international communication strategy for our du from Dutch, Belgium, European basis. There's a company uh, called PPX up, yeah. Tech, which is an American mobile patent engagement right, platform that sends, uh, receives health insurance data between patients and providers. They are hoping they can, they can find common space to collaborate on data, literacy, usability, and connectivity. And Innovation Sprint, a Belgian... Um, Subject matter expert company offering tech solutions to the e-health and life sciences businesses sector, focusing on big data analytics and artificial intelligence in real world data. They can work with us around making our data more actionable in terms of presentability and um, particularly reaching individuals. So that's kind of the three she's worked on so far. Um, yeah, seems like some really interesting work going on, and it's not the only ones. And um, we had a um, we're still trying to find a company with regards to data management and like in knowledge management side of things, who's going to give us it for free for this many people. That's literally the sticking point right now is loads of them are like, Oh, you can have it for 10 people. I'm like, yeah. we, need 400. <laughs> we need 400 just to start. Not, no, we've got a thousand people in theory, but we need 400 just for like the regular people who are around. So that's kind of the sticking point we're working on right now. And we're looking at a few options. What we'll work with nonprofits. We're also looking at moving towards, uh, actual non-profit status and the, and the steps required to be a legalized non-profit in america initially so there's 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 there's, 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 there's things moving sometimes it feels slow but we're, we're it's, it's all work in progress and it done yeah i would say oh. it's flying <laughs> may i put a, a question oh, sure yeah um so it's it's, it's obvious that um need to establish all kinds of partnerships in in the world um, now um, not only because we need them but we can, we can use that collaborative type of constellation to make a real impact um, in terms of relationship what I what I think is, is that you match on basically uh, uh, relate on let's say, what I call the the core principles of why you're doing it 
And um, ultimately, my perspective, this is about being in service of the global good. How do we articulate our core uh, head on when establishing, going into a, a connection, a relationship, a, um, a partnership? That is, I think, a theme that we need to address now. Yeah, Before and we, I 100% yeah. agree. Uh, again, I, I wish that was easier to accomplish than it is. And it's something that we're also uh, figuring out. Um, I would say, like, we, we definitely need help with that. And I think our conversations with you all are very beneficial to that. Uh, again, it kind of hap, hap, is happening. And it, it just, like, this whole, um, you know, I, I call it the why, how, and what. And we, we've started this document that we'll be sharing uh, soon, which is basically uh, values, principles, and missions. Why, how, and what. And values are things what we believe in and why we're here. Principles are like methods, how to deal with reality, our virtues. virtues. And um, the mission is basically short-term and our long-term goals. And we again it it seems like all of these things are emerging just from all the different uh things that are happening in our community and um at least i believe that we'll be able to come up with some sort of it very soon and uh, it's interesting at, at the different levels and the different types of people who we're starting to talk with in terms of potential partnerships of people who can, who can use what it is that we're doing that there are there's dramatically different interests in what those specific pieces are. So for some people it's, and organizations, it's very much, you know, here's the tool we have. It is something that is going to be useful for your people to accelerate their process. For others, they're interested in seeing how are we able to um, potentially work with them to define ways that our, our ability to, to do data analysis can be useful to them. And then there's others who are interested in um, what are we building structurally and how is that something that can be both replicated and something that can be can be kind of turned or extended uh, in different ways? And how much are we documenting that? So there's it's it's a tangle of different different things. So there's different stakeholders who are interested in different aspects of both. Okay, um, little observation, if I may. I think that we are, we are actually we. Uh, have passed the uh, the stage of emerging something. We are starting to be more shaped and more kind yeah. of. We are, we, are, we are starting to mature because everything that's going on online and worldwide happens quite fast. So I think that the emerging phase is behind us. And I think that uh, these questions are going to be answered pretty soon, uh, naturally. Uh, just uh, by core activities of communities of communities that persist in the very beginning. Okay. Is there anything else we want to discuss or jump on? Uh, does that answer your question, Wad? My question? Yeah, or your uh, kind of um, or yeah. Um, <clears throat> Well, my perspective is I, I honor the, the 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 let's say the confidence of, of Maya in, in uh, as I pointed out in 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 a conversation I had with you and Daniel, uh, I see the whole crisis and and uh, uh, such in the world as a big growing up. So we are leaving many parts of our old system behind because they are selfish they are adolescent type of uh, ways of organizing and using the earth and people so there's a maturation going on there and parallel to that we are in the process of maturing ourselves to form a what well, my perspective is a, a global brain function um, and from my perspective as a well, uh, collective intelligence organization development 
uh, expert, I would say you are still a emerging community and in terms of um, um, clarity on what I call purpose, practice and principles, organization, leadership, and also funding, let's say the things you need to exist, uh, still in maturation. So that is, well, already point subject to conversation and, and must be uh, subject to, to, to action uh, collaboratively within the team. So that's uh, to answer my own question <laughs> in a way. Uh, and I would like to add deep respect for what you're doing and, and what you're producing and, and uh, let's say the potential impact of it because it's, it's really, really uh, huge. But I think it's uh, also because of uh, Daniel's reaching out to cities, you know, very much important to, to have a clear definition of, of what we are about and how we are organized and what we have uh, um, to offer uh, services and, and, and such. So I think we, we need to ramp up with that parallel to all the, the, the core work. Yeah. Essentially, as, as we're uh, talking to various, uh, you know, municipalities, the cities, and we've yeah. already had a couple of calls with, with those, it, we have to be very clear what is the expectation, what is the ask, and what we can help them with. We cannot be this, you know, just um, another random, you know, some group of people that is uh, working on everything at once and it has to be crystallized. So I 100% agree, and we will do our best this and next week to, to make that happen. Yeah, oh, great, great. Because right. what I observe is that Maya's questions was about uh, uh, clarity also work inside the cell now that Corona Y is. Mm -hmm. and as, we, as we operate as a swarm, uh, we're very likely to be contacted or connected the link down from all sides. This is not an hierarchical model. So we need to, we offer each of one of them, at least the team leaders, this, this clarity on the why, the how, on, on the fly. So that's, that's. Yeah, you, you just uh, added a very important three. input that I think that should exist is actual, like uh, why this team exists and like, what does it do? Um, why, what, oh. and how? And essentially, uh, this is the sheet that uh, I've just created while we were talking, and this is um, an attempt. So, just a draft. I'll be sharing it after this call, and let's oh. let's test it. Let's see if we are able to fill it out internally, because that will be also very helpful for external communication to explain. Hey. This is the list of teams that we have. This is what they're working on. And it's even worth to include a kind of external teams which are already popping out. Like I would definitely add, um, you know, uh, we have uh, a sender that is working on the uh, four live box by data owners project to uh, revolutionize um, ownership of personal data. Um, and then we have, you know, Healthlands, which is another project that is open source um, browser for um, X-ray uh, image, images um, using AI. And we have plenty more that, you know, keep popping out. And we should probably put them on, on this agenda too. Uh, can we have a proper map, please, of, uh, that is uh, constantly updated? on everything that is going on. I think this should be the thing that uh, kind of funnels into that map. And basically if, you know, if someone adds something, a new team, um, first of all, it, it has to exist in, in Slack, right? So if you don't have Slack channel and Trello board, but you want to be in this sheet, then you most probably need Slack channel and Trello board. So um, let's see if this works and this helps. And just filling out 
Wai Wood Hao, the leader who is responsible for this team and committed to it the most, coordinators who is managing external communications, and progress, basically what happened, um, what is planned, and what, what are the needs. Let's test the structure. Let's see if uh, it works. Uh, I mean, I don't expect uh, too many people to be responsive because it's weekend, but hopefully on Monday we'll, we'll get some, some better structure. Um, yeah, and, and just one, se one second if I can, Dan. Um, I've been going through Slack and I'm, I'm trying to edit some of the profiles. I'll have a quick show what I've got so far in case anyone's got any other ideas. Um, so, you know how you can go into your own Slack profile and you can state things. My idea is to try and make it more clear to what actually people are doing with much more like nice. minutia. So I'm trying to come up with like, I'm going to, I'm going to do like task risk coordinators, which is people who are like organizing. And then I'm going to put like task risk engineers for people who are actually doing task risk stuff and so on and so forth. But has anybody else called like, you know, medical doctors? But people are sharing, right? No, the idea people is, is this would, yeah. the idea is this would be part of your profile and you could just go in and choose the role because right now it exists, but it's like a terrible selection of four things that make no sense. It's like yeah, manager. It's like it just don't make no sense. Self indication versus yeah. you know definitive uh, structure. So if you feel that you be belong to like DevOps and Dataverse, you just put it on your profile. Let's see if people will adopt this. I think it looks cool. Um, let's see if it works. I mean, I don't know what else I could have on there. I mean, I'd like it if I could just tag people personally with it, or if I could just put it on people's profiles because people don't yeah. seem to do it. Um, but it is just, it's one of the things I was looking I mean, at earlier. User groups to work out. are kind of like that. You know? I've got some more user groups that I'm going to start building as well. Cause I'm going to start building user groups for the more, like, like you say, there are small projects. Cause I'm, cause you can be in more than one user group. So if you're in, you know, exactly if you're part of DevOps and part of Dataverse, you can be in both groups. Problem is not enough people are updating all of these little ways of yeah. grouping people right now and it's also and important to, to know to that the the way we'll create this kind of organizational structure should ideally um you know make it easier for people not to be in 10 teams at the same time because we naturally gravitate towards that and that leads to you know first of all overwhelmness and second of all frustration and just lack of uh, commitment and you know, ideally, the balance is having like maximum of two or three teams because that's you know you, you cannot be in twenty teams at the same time. It's just I mean, impossible. what I've got here, there, you, I can add two. I could basically make this and then make a duplicate of it, and that way you could like this is my primary, this is my secondary. Beyond that, I don't do anything else. Yeah. If people feel like they need to be in two places, I mean, I mean, like me. But that's not that's not a really right. point right now. That sounds. But great. I'm good. I'll see if I, I'm, if anybody else can come up with any more labels. I mean, I'll probably. I mean, to a certain extent, I'll even come up with like labels for the external smaller teams, like the. Yeah, just so people can, you know, if you can look uh, on a profile, they're going to actually what they're working on. Tyler, I, would, I would like to help. I would like to help Tyler on that. Just send me, just send me what you feel like your role is right now, and I'll just I'll add every role in that exists. I'm not bothered how many years. <laughs> All right. All right. Sounds great, guys. Thank you so much for taking some precious Saturday time of yours. And I I really feel that today's call is very yeah, I, I, sorry. After uh, apologies for interrupting. Can you share the uh, the today's uh, minute? Uh, editing the file again. The file for for what? Yeah, the, the link to the uh, to the today's meeting. Uh, uh, yep, today. I'll be sharing it with the recording of the video call, and probably in like fifteen minutes because I need to eat something. <laughs> All right, sounds good, guys. Thank you so much, and have a good weekend. Thank you, Arthur. All right. Thank you. Bye.